I don't know a student who will tell you nice things about their accommodation. When a fire starts to burn, Students at the University of Manchester are on rent strike. Activists claim around 350 students in university accommodation are withholding rent, costing the university around £500,000. Students say they're living in subpar accommodation that they can't even afford. Rat traps down there, rat traps over there. And this is the mould in our ceiling. We've kind of given up on complaining now. And some have taken the protest further. They've moved out of their halls rooms and into university buildings, putting their place at university at risk in the process. And a lot of students are desperate because they can't afford their rent, or they can't afford food, or they're having to work sort of 30 hours a week just to be able to afford their rent. At least the uni's not going to meet our demands, action will continue. I went to Manchester to meet the occupiers and get to the heart of the student rent strikes. This is the Simon building at the University of Manchester. It's usually used for lectures and tutorials, but for three weeks it's been home to around 20 activists who are sleeping, eating and giving themselves tattoos here. The university hasn't taken kindly to this, even turning the heating off in a previous occupation and security blocking some food deliveries. Occupiers are pretty scrupulous about protecting their identities from university authorities. Yo, can people put masks on because we've got media not here. Do you want to come up with a code name for yourself? Oh, hey, that's on the spot a bit. Uh, <laughs> Greg. Greg is a first year student on rent strike. He's been sleeping in the Simon building for eight nights. We're protesting predominantly the fact that the university has decided to increase rent during a cost of living crisis, uh, but we're also demanding uh, that they meet the demands of the UCU uh, and give every student a one-off payment um, to sort of help with cost of living uh, and because the maintenance loan hasn't increased with inflation. Uh, students are getting desperate and students from working class backgrounds are being completely um, left out of the university process because it's becoming financial, it's becoming if you don't have a way to get support from home you either have to work long hours aside, on, alongside your degree which makes it harder to get the academic grades or you're having to rely on help from parents which a lot of people just aren't able to do. Both staff and students are losing out. We're like getting less money while the uni's getting more. Um, their reserves, again, they have one and a half billion pounds in unrestricted reserves. Uh, that's money which should be mobilised for cost of living crisis. All the uni's done, which they did to protect their reputation, was give most students a week's rent, which is after putting it up by £450. It's utterly disgraceful and it's why students are angry because it goes deeper than just the university not listening to students. It's the model which the university has run along. It's run for profit, it's marketised, and they are making money off students suffering and staff's low pay and bad working conditions. The university is disputing both the number of students on rent strike and both the amount of money that's being withheld from them. Um, they say those figures are not accurate. What do you say to that? Uh, well, we were very honest and open with that. We said, okay, that's fantastic. Uh, we asked a freedom of information request in the university, and we said we'd be very happy for you to tell us exactly how many students didn't pay their rent and how much they withheld it. Uh, the university decided not to provide those figures. Well, we are still in the process of providing them uh, by collecting email receipts, stuff like that. So we can prove that a large number of students haven't paid their rent. The university cannot prove that their claims are true. But I think morale's high with students. I mean, this can go on indefinitely, really. If the uni's not going to meet our demands, action will continue. Uh, I think sort of this, the position that students are in, it's going to reach breaking point. If the university doesn't give in and help students with the cost of living crisis, students are just going to get increasingly angry and increasingly desperate, and will do whatever needs to be done um, to ensure that sort of u the uni system changes, both in Manchester and nationally. I went to meet Sophie. She's a first year mental health nursing student living in halls. She pays more than her maintenance loan and rent for accommodation complete with mice and mould, so she's gone on rent strike. This is my flat. Um, if we come through here, it's the hallway. This is the floor the boys are on. And then this is the kitchen. This is where our mice and rats like to live. Rat traps down there, rat traps over there. And then I'll show you upstairs. Um, are the rat traps working? Um, no. <laughs> This is the mould in our ceiling. Um, we've told them about it. They haven't done anything. So we've kind of given up on complaining now. Are you, are you worried about the mould? I am. Like, when I first came here, I remember like looking up and going and telling everyone, and being like, oh, there's so much mould in the bathtub or in the bathroom. And now I've just kind of like, if you just keep worrying about it, it's like, that's all you can focus on. So <laughs> I just kind of look at it now and stare at it and be like, okay. Yeah. I'm worried about breathing it in, especially because like since being back at university I can really feel like 
everyone's always ill all the time here. So that's probably something to do with it. Mm, probably, especially like the people that have really bad mold in their rooms. Like I feel for them if you're sleeping every night, mm. like deep sleeping next to mold. This I'm more annoyed about because it brings silverfish, and that's not very nice to look at <laughs> in the morning. That's horrible. Yeah, it's not nice. And then um, you're paying how much for this? We're paying one hundred and ten pound a week to live here. Okay, so my maintenance loan is around. 1.4k I think and that's the lowest I get but you can get but my mum can't afford to give me money like I don't know how it works and then this is 1.5k that's what we pay like in free installments mm -hmm. so it just doesn't work I have to make up a hundred pounds somehow to pay my rent plus then the whatever amount of money to feed myself go out get to the bus do everything else that I'm trying to do mm -hmm. to get my degree. <laughs> and you're also doing a very stressful degree. Yeah, so I'm doing mental health nursing. I'm currently on placement, so I'm literally going to work right now. So obviously it would be a lot nicer to be able to come back and not have to be stressed about just basic survival needs, like going shopping and getting food. And is, that, is this what you hoped university would be like? No, no. Like I've experienced university with friends that are older than me. And it's nothing like this. Like they're able to afford to live, and they're having fun and stuff. Like I'm not getting that right now. That's not happening. Do you think that will change? Hopefully, if the university gets their head screwed on right, it will change. And if they actually start listening to us and realizing we're not just being like rebellious university students, like everyone thinks. Like no, we're actually talking up for a lot of people that need help, including ourselves. I think then it will change and hopefully people will start seeing that and start backing us and even raising more attention towards it. Back at the occupation, it was clear how much they seemed to be enjoying themselves. I'm not sure I'd have been in such good moods if I'd been sleeping in a classroom for three weeks. But speaking to activists, it was clear why. How, what, what is life like being a student at the moment? A little bit bleak, to be honest. Um, I think a lot of the things that we treat as like uni staples, right, like going out, um, like just having a fun time as well as studying, it's just not great. Like you, you can't do it. You can't, you can't do, it. do it. Like I know it's like a typical student. Like oh, they always go out. Whatever. I can't afford to do it. Mm -hmm. I haven't been out since uh, just last year. Jesus, like, really? Yeah. Like I've not been out this year because I can't afford to. And I imagine like coming to Manchester, it's great student nightlife. That's that's one of like the main like yeah. something that appeals about going to Manchester University, isn't it? Oh yeah. Well, can't experience that. Yeah. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it, so therefore you can't do it. So you think, what's the fucking point? I may as well just stay at home and go to a university around there. Yeah. And it kind of plays into each other as well because it'll be like, do I go out for a pint, right? Mm -hmm. Gosh, it's six quid. Or do I have enough money to get the bus tomorrow to go to uni? It's like you're kind of playing this constant game between do I prioritize my own education or do I try and have some fun? And that constant battle, I know every student has, but come to a point now where you just kind of have to live for your degree a little yeah. bit and it's not it's isolating yeah and, I think and it's, the, it's fucking depressing yeah. to just always be either in your house or in university because you can't afford to do anything else i think people talk about like the third space which is like the concept of somewhere outside working outside of home that you can go and enjoy as students we can't afford to have a third space we just have university or home because we can't afford to do anything else like our third space is probably the bus. When a fire starts to burn, Here at the occupation, it was clear that they'd made a third space. People were sharing food, putting on free activities, and seemed to just be having fun. The atmosphere was a stark contrast to Sophie's whole flat, which didn't even have a sofa to relax on. But for all their good intentions and how much fun they were having, the students in the occupation are putting their place at the university at risk. The University of Manchester has told a living activist that they are under investigation. My, my feeling is that they're, they're going to try and take the harshest route possible and try and get the maximum possible punishment, which could be, I think it could be a fine of up to a grand per person, um, or they could even angle for expulsion. You're taking quite a large risk doing this, as in there's, you, you, it's putting burden on your, well, you're probably your physical health if you're sleeping not in a bed every night. There's, you're putting your place at the university in jeopardy for this. What if this doesn't work? 
I think it will have to work. I think something is going to happen at every uni across the country because as cost of living gets worse, as the rent and housing crisis gets worse, we are barreling toward a completely unsustainable higher education system and something is going to have to give. It's either going to be the ability of uh, students from working class and lower income backgrounds to come to university or it's going to be senior management are going to have to start putting aside their profit, massive profit taking and actually start looking after students. We're taking this risk because there isn't any other option for students. Um, I, I, some of the buildings I've occupied have actually been nicer than my flat. For example, we don't have the hot showers, but some of these buildings do. So I'd say, while there's a risk, everyone understands why we're taking it. And we also understand that we don't have very much of the choice in order to get the university to listen to our demands. If we had a way of pushing the university to listen to students, to reduce the rent during a cost of living crisis, or at the very least agree not to put it up by £450 when inflation is at a 40 high, we absolutely would. But this is the only way we have to do it, so action will continue indefinitely until the university meets our demands. The University of Manchester said in a statement, We understand that the cost of living situation is having an effect on students, and many of them are worried or in difficulty. We are here to help and have contacted students about payment options and support. Our Living Cost Support Fund means that students can obtain grants of up to £2,000 if they are in financial difficulty. University accommodation is comparably priced to others in the Russell Group and less costly than private accommodation in Manchester. We have not passed on the big increases in cost this year for energy and food. We would not let an unsuitable property to any student. Any reported issues are dealt with immediately and regular health and safety checks take place. There is ongoing investment into the residences to update and modernise facilities as they age. We maintain a pest control contract, which sees professionals attend eight visits per year to university residences to undertake inspections and carry out preventative measures. As of the 9th of March, 44 people have declared to credit control that they are withholding rent as part of this campaign, out of more than 8,000 residents. Participation figures quoted by students are not correct. We sent several letters to students who've illegally occupied buildings asking them to leave. This has included letters to those who occupied the John Owens building for a period of 10 days and who, through locking and barricading access points, prevented our staff and other students from being able to access the building during that period. This presented significant risks to health and safety and disruption to the work of colleagues focused on the delivery of services to students, staff and the wider community.